never get the paw prints out of the hen house now and you can't go Hi there ladies and gents, I hope you've been having a good week and you've been enjoying your weekend. I have quite a few picture books to share with you this week, starting with S is for Smithsonian. It comes from a Michigan press, so you know I'm really going to talk it up. Now there are zillions of alphabet books, approximately, that Sleeping Bear Press has put out there, including one for each of the 50 states. So I thought that this might be kind of a cheap ploy just to try and get distribution at the Smithsonian Museum stores. Now if that's so, then it's a really good ploy because I learned a bunch from this book and I'm interested in going back to DC post haste. There's a convenient guide in the back also for finding all of the museums close to the National Mall. If I were on a family trip to DC, this book would be indispensable. Math storybooks tend to be either really mind-blowing or pretty mediocre, and this one falls on the positive side. It's called Tally Cat T Keeps Track. Tally uses pretty unscrupulous meth methods to win each of a series of contact contests he creates, tracking him against his friends. But when he winds up in a bind, he decides to be more honest about math and show that he can be a good friend, too. The, the illustrations are really cute, but not sicking, sickeningly so. And I, I really love the Stuart Murphy math series of all the great books that he's written about it, but this book is kind of a, a cut above that series. Girl in the Know is a perfect guide for managing puberty, managing talking about puberty if you don't want to deal with the pesky graphic details. Uh, if you do want them, What's Happening to My Body, Book for Girls, is still the best guide I've ever read. I still have the copy that my mom and I read together in 1983, and I would definitely suggest this book to any families who are looking to support a district puberty curriculum. Nature poems can be tricky. They either sound like a Victorian-era siren song about the wonders of nature, or irritatingly rhymey. Uh, Joyce Sidman, whose book Ubiquitous is getting a lot of Caldecott book buzz, uh, walks a fine line between these two extremes. The woodcuts, which are done by Rick Allen, are absolutely breathtaking. I actually squealed out loud at the library. Um, quietly, of course. Katie Lau, this book was written for you. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit that I get most of my new information from children's nonfiction books. And this week, I finally figured out what spurred my interest in nonfiction. I had been wondering because most of the nonfiction books that had been published when I was younger, like Russell Friedman's uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, were really text heavy and didn't have a lot of great, interesting pictures of people and different paraphernalia. And so I realized that it, I got inspired by the look from the past, uh, look into the past parts of all the American Girl books. So I would always want to flip right to the back and read that section of the book, but I held myself off until I finished the main story. So thank you to Pleasant Company. You changed my life, even though you did retire Samantha and Felicity, and you're now owned by Mattel. That is all for this week. I'm really looking forward to seeing you and your families at conferences this Thursday and Friday. Thank you. Thank you.